Hi, I'm Julia. Welcome to my garden. We are into October now. Happy fall, everyone. And it is just about the time of year I usually want to clean stuff up. The potager is looking quite the mess. There are things everywhere. But we still have some nice weather left, and so I'm gonna give it, you know, probably a week or two before I really start that cleanup. Right now, I'm going to focus on saving some seeds for flowers. I've done a little bit of seed saving in the past. I'm gonna try to do some more this year, and I'm going to save some of my favorite flowers that are really easy to grow and to save seed from. So I wanna give you a close-up of them and how I save the seeds. So let's head over to the potager. I'm starting out here with my zinnias. I love zinnias, I know a lot of you do too. They're really the first cut flower that I grew and so I have a special place in my heart. They're so easy and they're really easy to save seed for. The zinnia variety I'm going to be saving seeds from today is this queen lime peach variety and I believe this is the first year I've gotten these seeds and I absolutely love them. So these flowers here are absolutely beautiful and perfect for cutting for arrangements. Oh, so pretty. But that is not what we want to pick for cut flowers. What we want are these dried flower heads down here. You can harvest the fresh flower heads or ones that are not completely dry and then let them dry inside before you collect seeds. But it's really, I found it's best and easiest just to let them dry on the plant. All right, so I'm just gonna take my snips. Really only need So I've got my dried zinnia heads. I brought them inside where it's not windy. And uh, actually this one has a seed on the outside here. <laughs> but let me show you how I can get them out. So I just gently pull the petals and at the end of the petals, these are the seeds. So I like to kind of tear the petals off. I'll make a little pile of petals that'll go in the compost and the seeds. So sometimes when you pull, you don't get the seeds, That there's no seeds there. So if that's the case, you can also look through like this. There, I got that one out. So there's some in there I'll go through, but I also just wanna show you in here. I'm sure there are some more, they'll just pop out. So you can get quite a few seeds from each head here. There they are. They kind of look like little arrow points. And I have these little um, packets that I purchased, but you could make your own or use other things you have around. You could even use a jar. Just something that'll stay, you know, dry. And, oop. and I put them in there. So there's my zinnia seeds. Next, I will be saving some scabiosa seed. So the problem here is that I did not label them and they've all been dried out for a while. So I have a few in there that I've seen and I've been looking at pictures from the year to know what order they're in. So I'm hoping I have the right variety. Now here is one scabiosa flower that's left. It is a black knight and I actually already saved some of the seeds for this variety. And I just wanted to show you that because that's you know how the flower normally looks. Again, that is not at good stage for picking for seeds, but you can harvest it. It's kind of past its prime, but you could harvest it uh, for a bouquet. There is the bud stage and the flower stage. And then here, it, it obviously doesn't have the flower there anymore, but it's not quite dried enough for you to pick for seeds. That one's still green, so I would leave that one. What we're really looking for is the one next to it, right back here and that has been dried enough. So most of these on this plant, as you can see, are completely dry and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get a different variety. I am fairly sure that this plant on the end was the white scabiosa or pincushion flower. Um, and I recently found just how easy these seeds are to save. So again, these are all dried up and I don't even really need my snips for these ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull pull them off. And these ones, they're super simple. They just literally, they'll fall apart. So you can just gently tease them apart. And each of these 
is a seed. So that's pretty incredible. Super, super easy. And I will just put this in a labeled bag. Next to my scabiosa, I have this beautiful straw flower. This is actually my first year successfully growing it and I'm so happy with it. And I was happy to discover that the seeds are very easy to find. They are small, but I can find them easily. So let's get some of those. The variety I'm going to pick right now is this beautiful rose variety. It is perfect for drying as well. So I'm going to, some of these that are still open, uh, pick for drying. This one's actually really good here for drying because it hasn't fully opened yet. Some others that are more in bud form are great for drying as well. However, if they have the orange or yellowy centers, they're too open for drying. But those are still really great for arrangements. And then as they get farther and farther along, you can see here, they get fluffy and they're one of these seeds that blow away in the wind. Here is one of our straw flower heads inside and you can see it just the fluff all wants to come out. So these seeds, ah, the seeds are pretty small right there. That's the seed that we're looking for. So super tiny. So I'm going to try to just kind of take all the fluff out and then I'm going to try to find the seeds. Now I'm going to get some of this other stuff is just gonna end up in the packet and that's okay. I'm not selling these, these are for me. So as long as I recognize what the seeds are and try to get some of those uh, sewed when I'm sewing the seeds, it should be fine. Oh, look at that. Cosmos is another favorite flower to grow and to be honest I don't use this as much in arrangements as I probably should mainly it doesn't last as long but it is beautiful and it has reseeded itself all over my garden this year and I'm not upset about it so I'm gonna go ahead and collect some seeds from this cupcake variety here now Again, this reseeds really easily, so I don't know if it's one that you need to save seeds from, but if you wanted to, you know, share with friends or put it in a specific place in your garden, it's really easy to collect. So again, we're not collecting the beautiful flowers as they are, and I leave these for as long as possible until they've completely died back. Uh, the pollinators love them, and there's really no reason for me not to. So what we're looking for, again, are the dried up flowers. We've got a dried flower head here. This one's still a little bit green, but I'll show you. These green things here are the seeds, and these, um, it's better to get them brown. This is a little not as ripe, I guess, as I would like, but I can probably leave these out to dry. That's probably what I'll do. It is hard to find them completely dried up because they, they fall and fly away so easily. It's how they reseed so easily. Um, but let me see if one of these, I think one of these has a few. Okay, so most of the ones on this one are gone, but you can, you know. Here we go. So this is what you're looking for. These brown long seeds there. Those are your Cosmo seeds. Calendula is one of my favorite things to harvest because it is so simple and fun. I do try to pick as many calendula flowers as I can to dry uh, because I love to use it in my salve for skin. It's like a homemade neospore and I'm hoping to do a video on that this fall as well because I need to make more. But I always leave a few. I always miss a few. I always leave some for the pollinators because there's always pollinators around it. And those dry up and turn into really cool seeds. So this is a cool example here of the seeds forming, but this is still green and we don't want to harvest at this age stage yet. I'm going to leave this and it'll be fine for a while and then I can harvest it probably in a week or two. This one right here is a perfect example and perfect to pick. So all of these little, I don't know what to call them, <laughs> claw-like things in here are the seeds. I'll pull it out. And they come in different, slightly different shapes and sizes. 
so easy and so fun. Look at these seeds. They are the most unique seeds. Very nice. If you guys have been with me all season, you will have seen me sow and plant and take care of and harvest these snapdragons back here. Now, many of them are hybrids. I'm not gonna save the seeds from a ton of them. I'd prefer to just buy them, especially the Madam Butterfly series. But there are a couple that are open pollinated and I am going to try saving the seeds of one variety. So let me show you. This variety, all dried up here at the end, uh, was a new to me variety this year called Night and Day. I got the seeds, I believe from Fruition Seeds, and it was really cool. And these were super fun. And so I'm going to try to save some of their seeds. So what I'm gonna look for again is dried up Ooh. I should use my clippers for this but I'm looking for these dried up pods here and all the seeds this here is perfectly what I'm looking for there's lots of tiny seeds in there now I'm not going to show you out here because they're tiny <laughs> let's get a couple more of these stems okay snapdragons now Let's see what we can find in some of these pots. Hopefully, we'll find some seeds. This one kind of still has the seed of the bloom on the end. This one's still a little bit green. I'm not sure how this one's gonna go. Okay, this one here looks a little bit more promising. You can kind of see there's holes in the top, kind of like a shaker where they could come out. Oh, there we go. This is what we're looking for. Again, this is they're really tiny, so they're hard to see, but you see all those tiny little brown dots. Those are all snapdragon seeds. Uh, you get so many from one plant. So this is just one little pod that was on one little, on one plant, and I don't know, there's at least 10 pods on there. So if you get them all, that's a lot of snapdragons. Each of these little seeds will grow into a plant. I just find seed saving so cool. Okay, let's see if we can just Go ahead and dump them in there. Let's try this one. I'm just kind of breaking it apart with my fingers. There might be a better way to do this. I am losing seeds below me. I'm gonna shake them out. I do have various marigolds throughout the potager, but these ones out here in my green stock are the easiest to harvest the seeds from and the easiest to show you. So that's what I'm gonna do. This here is a tangerine gem variety of marigold. Um, I, I just love them. I have the tangerine gem and the lemon gem and they're like tiny little, little marigolds. Um, and I, I also love, I mean, there's so many beautiful varieties and I do want to try more next year. But the method for saving the seeds on them is the same and the seeds all look similar, although you may notice seeds are different sizes for different size flowers. So let me get in here and give you a closer look. Here's the beautiful tangerine gem and just beyond it down there you can see the lemon gem as well. Now again we're looking for little dried up pieces. Um, so. <laughs> I've got some in here. Now, I, I actually, this still has some orange on it, so that's not ideal. I prefer to get the ones that are completely dried up like this. So I'm gonna get a bunch of these little pods. The seeds are inside of here. I believe they can tolerate a light frost, so we'll just, uh, I'll just leave them until they're done. Here are our marigold little pods we took from the plant, and you can already see this one's coming out. You just pull them out. These are the mar marigold seeds. They kind of look like matchsticks. They've got like a blackish, dark, oh yeah, I think it's black. They've kind of got, half of them are black and then they've got um, tan, a tan part, they're bicolor. And it's that simple. So each of these little pockets, I guess, you just pull them out. It's kind of like arrows in a quiver. Um, and then you can discard that part and these are all seeds. So there you go. And these are my tangerine gem marigolds. Love them. Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed this time in my garden with me saving some seeds. And hopefully I've helped you learn to save some of your own so you can grow more of your own flowers next year and save some money while doing so. If you have any questions, please let me know in the description box below and I will talk to you next time. And until then, happy gardening.